every time. William, thank you for letting me know no sound. Yeah, I'm having some serious sound issues, everybody. I don't know what is going on here, but appreciate you letting me know. I'm going to have to, like, do something about the sound issues here. So thank you, William. Man, you guys missed an awesome intro. Apologies about the sound issues. We're going to get those squared away by Monday. I promise you guys that. But, you know, DFS office hours, five days a week, 2 p.m. Eastern, here back as always got an 11 game nba slate on tap tonight got an action-packed weekend of dfs got nfl mma formula one basketball ton of sports going on hope everybody's getting in on the action get your questions in to the discord in the office hours channel or get them in the youtube chat we will get to all the questions before the end of the show promise you guys that but that being said you know already couple minutes in had some sound issues let's get saberson pulled up and let's get rolling on some questions here there was a question yesterday from john stanger and i believe it was uh smh 1102 talking about min exposures and specifically showdown i gave some thoughts on it i gave some feedback i took it back to the team just to check my understanding was correct and i wanted to do a little follow-up and just make sure everybody knows exactly how it works. So if you put in min projections in a showdown format, you know, maybe I'm going to play the Sunday night uh, showdown coming up. It looks like it's KC and the Chargers. So I'm going to play this, and maybe I decide that, you know, in my post build, I'm not getting enough uh, Kelsey captain lineups, and I just want to lock button Kelsey in the captain what is going to happen the, since this is pre-built we are going to use that as an input into the sim we are going to tell the sim that hey kelsey has to be in the captain and then the sims that we pull using 0010 sliders so we're randomly pulling one single game sim from the entire sim database to build these lineups we are going to say it has to have kelsey and we are going to put that in, and then we are going to build the rest of the lineup using the sim. So, you know, since it is a post-build input, Kelsey goes in first, and then the sim uh, or the builder uses the sims to finish up the rest of the lineup using the sims. But because we put it in as a pre-built input, that gets put in first, and then the rest of the lineup gets solved accordingly. So just wanted to let everybody know there, you know, just some clarification on the conversation that we had yesterday. Any min exposures you put in, in showdowns, those go in first, and then the rest of the lineup gets solved using the sims or the single sim that is pulled for the 0010 build. So just want to let everybody know there and clarify that point. And that being said, we are going to get going with the questions that we have today, I see a comment here. Just wanted to touch on this from a uh, snowman. Snowman is feeling good. Said, thank you, Saberson team. I'm feeling like a winner again. So snowman, you know, that's what the show is for. And this is the, just for everybody. You know, we do this show so you can ask questions to kind of try and uh, get feedback on your process or understand concepts that you don't understand. So you can take those, apply those in your DFS process and hopefully become a better DFS player, become a more winning DFS player. So happy to hear you're having success, no man. And uh, I encourage you to keep asking questions uh, here in the show. Keep asking questions in the discord, keep learning and continue to win. So uh, happy to hear about your success. Hope you continue to have success. All right, got a question here from Sammy, and Sammy said, is there a video showing how to upload projections? Okay, so if anybody is ever looking for any type of walkthrough or just has like a general question about SaberSim, you can go up here to the settings. You can go to help. If you go to help, let me just pull up my screen really quickly. It will take you to our sabersim.com slash support page. And here you can go down. We have tutorials. We have frequently asked questions. The easiest thing to do is to go to the frequently asked questions, go to view more, and then up here in the articles, type in whatever you're looking for. So I would say, you know, upload projections. 
And then how do I upload custom projections? We do short videos. Uh, you know, this is like less than two minutes long, basically walking you through exactly how to do that with a uh, transcript of what Jordan is saying in the video. So highly recommend checking this out. If you, you know, I'll just do like a quick run through uh, on this question. It should be fairly easy to get through. So let me get Saberson pulled back up here. Uh, how to upload custom projections. You can do it two ways. One, you hit this upload button. You can upload a CSV. It will pull in the CSV and match the column headers to, you know, what we have as drop downs here. Or you can copy and paste the data. I would say if you're going to copy and paste it, do not copy and paste one column at a time. Instead, copy and paste uh, only like one full time. And then you can come in here and click, you know, whether you're using ID or name and then projection versus ownership, et cetera. So uh, two ways to do it. And then that that data will get pulled into the My Projection column if you are uploading projections or the My Ownership or if you are uploading ownership. And then you can come over here if you're using uh, – Saberson Pro, you can save these projections or ownership, and then you can come in here and you can average them, you can aggregate, you can do weights. Uh, if you want to weight Saberson a little more than whatever other source you're putting in, or if you want to weight them equally, you could just use the average. So a lot of awesome uh, ways to use custom projections in the app and that sabersim.com slash support. Uh, the frequently asked questions is always a great resource if you need a quick short tutorial on how to do something highly recommend checking that out all right got a question here from phantom phantom said how do you determine the number of max dupes you want when calculating the geometric mean for nfl showdown field size is it safe to say that the more max dupes you go with the more conservative you are playing and vice versa okay really good question here phantom what I will say is that if you are looking for a reference on geometric mean, uh, Jordan and I did an awesome video on it in um, a, like kind of right when it got released. So if you go over to the YouTube channel, you go over to the office hours playlist. And then uh, if you're in the office hours playlist, we have this video. I'm looking for it right now. Product DFS Q&A. Product ownership and geometric mean. We did like a 30 minute segment breaking it down. We had formulas on the screen in an, in a uh, Word doc and just kind of walked through it like end to end, comparing to some ownership, etc. Really good video. But you know, for your question, uh, let me just get Saberson pulled back up here. Happy to touch on it. So, so you know, one thing I do want to stress when using uh, geometric mean. So. You know, the, the number of max dupes you want, that's up to you. That's kind of how, like, aggressive do you want to be with the geometric mean? You know, do you, like, I, I can't tell you how many dupes you are comfortable with. Uh, you know, do you, like, want to shoot for unique unique uh, lineups? Do you want to shoot for, like, under fives, under tens, you know, under twenties? Like, how high up, how high many dupes are you okay having is kind of a personal question and something you have to answer for yourself. I will say when you use the geometric mean, the, the way that I like to use it is, is, you know, what something that I will touch on. I like to use it more as a guardrail as opposed to something I want to shoot for. So, so for me, if I were using a geometric mean rule, I would build it and, and use it to say like, Hey, you know, I don't want more than, you know, uh, I don't want to line up with, approximately more than 50 dupes excuse me i gotta sneeze um so so you know i'm gonna set my geometric mean higher so, to say like hey you know don't give me a lineup with more than like 50 dupes and based on like the calculation and and, it, and it's not perfect but you know it, it does it does work uh most of the time but that's not to say you'll never get one with more than 50 but ra rather than saying like hey you know i want to shoot for like under 10 dupes you know i i am much less likely to use an aggressive uh geometric mean as opposed to using it more as like a guardrail saying hey you know keep me out of like this really really high dupe rather than shooting for the low dupe i think it's a better way to use it um, one thing I've noticed is when using it, 
Like if you were to run a 0010 with no rules, no geometric mean, no nothing, the optimals you get, and then the lineups that you get using a geometric mean rule can be like way, way off and, and, uh, or just like different. I'm not going to say like off, but, but we'll just say different. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to like showcase this, you know, we're talking about the Sunday night game, right? I'm just going to run this. I have no rules. I have, you know, no min salary or anything like that. So this is like a true, you know, single game sim optimal uh, sample size of, of 500 builds here. And we're just going to kind of uh, demo this really quickly. So if I were to come in here and look at my exposures and I'm just going to look at the entire pool of 500 here. So, you know, if, if, if I were to sort by ownership, um, it, I'm getting like the highest owned guys are, are the most optimal. And it's like kind of what you expect. Right. And you're, you're going to go in here and you're going to look for like some leverage spots, et cetera. If, if I were to run this with a geometric mean rule and, and maybe uh, this is, this is just something I, I've messed around with. So I know about this. Uh, you would have to like go and do the formula to, to figure it out yourself. But if I were to use like a geometric mean of no more, then I think it's 26.5 is, is about 50 to 60 dupes uh, in, in the flagship contest. So, you know, you're playing like the, the $15 uh, flagship showdown on Thursdays. It has about like a hundred and uh, 140 ish, uh, 140 K entries. So, you know, you do like the geometric mean formula spits out a number it's usually around this number so i'm just going to use it for the sake of the conversation and then i'm going to run a build no other changes just that one rule and we are going to look at the exposures that come out of this usually you end up getting exposures to a lot of the lower owned players and that is because the builder is trying to meet this rule so if i were to come in here and I, it might be better in my in my 500 but um, yeah, so so okay. So if I look at my my entire pool of 500, it it looks okay. We're still seeing a lot of Mahomes, a lot of Eckler. But if you are just building your 20, you are not gonna see these players as often. We are gonna get much more exposure. Like we have one Mahomes lineup. We only have two lineups with Eckler, none with Kelsey. And then when we do this, we're getting a lot of these like three percent on captains, six percent on captains. 1% on captain and like, look at the salary, you know, Justin Watson at, at 2000 Gerald ever like these, like the, our top three exposures were, were not nowhere near what we were seeing kind of in that optimal. So, so what I'll say is like, when, when do using this rule, you have to kind of do a lot in the post build to basically like manage the risk of your portfolio as far as exposures go. So, you know, Jordan, Jordan and I talk about this on the video. It's like, Hey, you know, once you start adding like these geo mean rules, like you are turning off of this optimal build path and, and going down a different road. Like it is important to continue to drive the car down that road because, because you are turning off of the road. Saber Sim is going down and Saber Sim might not know how to navigate that road like perfectly. And and I think this is like a good example, you know, just kind of some of the top exposures we're getting, getting almost none of Mahomes and Kelsey who were really optimal in our 0010. I think you just have to exercise caution with your exposures if you are gonna use geomine rules. And and this was at the guardrail. This was at, you know, I'm I, I'm saying I don't want more than 50 to 60 dupes. Imagine saying, you know, I want to shoot for 10 and using a more aggressive geo mean rule, it might end up in an even worse situation. So, so just, you know, that, that's what I got to say on geo mean. I think it can be a very good tool if you know how to use it correctly, but just be very careful about putting it in and, you know, seeing these exposures. Like I would not just ride with the exposures you're seeing. You could almost come in here and, and sort by pool exposure and, um, you know, kind of make sure that you're not straying too far away from some of these uh, top pool exposures just to satisfy the rule is is what I will say. You know, like so much Gerald Everett and he's like 
his pool exposure is really close to his ownership. So, so in this situation, I feel like pool exposure almost does a better job of, of approximating uh, what your exposure should look like when using a geo mean rule. So that's my advice on like geo mean and how to apply it. Uh, the video with Jordan and I awesome video, but just wanted to touch on that for everybody tuning in today. All right. Uh, keeping on the showdown topic, uh, got a question here from Jordan Vigo said, can we get a refresher on what goes into Sabre score for showdown slates? Yep. Happy to talk about it. Uh, we are going to use this build where I did not use the, um, geo mean rule. So what goes into Sabre score? So the, the first and foremost thing is that we value more lineups that show up as optimal in multiple sims. So if a if we you know do a random sample, five hundred sims, if one lineup comes up twice, that lineup gets a a big saber score bump, and you can kind of see it if you were to scroll scroll through here, right? We have this saber score one hundred lineup of this uh, four two charger stack, and then we have a big drop off to ninety six point eight for the next highest lineup, and and um. You know, it kind of evens out here, you know, 93.7, 93.3, 92.7. So the Sabre scores get a lot closer. I would say like this lineup at the top probably showed up a couple of times, you know, two, maybe three times optimal. And then, you know, we see like another big jump from 96.8 to 94.3. So you can see uh, like this big kind of jump. So that that's one big thing that goes into Sabre score is the number of times that a lineup shows up as optimal. And to just like a saber score refresher so the the sliders are inputs to saber score saber score is dynamic whatever the sliders are set to saber score is going to use those as like grading criteria of the lineups that get generated so in this situation for nfl showdown the correlation is zero the ownership fate is zero and the sim that sim diversity is 10 what Sabre score is mostly doing in showdowns is one grading for how much a lineup comes up as optimal and two, the upside of the lineup, the higher the SIM diversity slider, the more we are going to weight uh, upside in that equation. And then the lower SIM diversity, the less weighted uh, SIM, SIM diversity is going, or the less, the lower SIM diversity is, the less we are going to weight upside in the saber score calculation. So if you if you if you ever hover over saber score, you can get like a a quick rundown of of what we think it is. But for showdown specifically, it's upside and the number of times that a lineup comes up as optimal, which is why people want to apply these like geo mean rules because we really aren't saber score is not doing anything to try and decrease dupes so that's why you know you can come in here and you can you know build different type of rules for for different slates and uh you know you could build like the aggregate rules you know you could use uh some ownership product ownership you could use like specific group rules you can make rules based on uh specific captains you know like one that i like to do is like if there is a captain who is projected over 10 percent ownership must use, you know, one low owned player in the flex. And I will decide, you know, how I want to do that. Like that is really a um, slate to slate type of uh, nuance. Like I don't have like a hard and fast rule about what, what flex ownership. Sometimes it's like, I'll use like an if then rule, like if at least one player and I'll, I'll usually do this automatic. Like if, if at least one captain, I'll add a stat requirement, you know, my own greater than greater than 10, you know, use at least one. Sometimes I make this two, depending on the slate, use at least, you know, one or two uh, players from the same game in the, in the flex whose, whose ownership is, you know, sub, sub 25, sub, sub 20, like it depends. So those are just like different things to think about to try and decrease dupes. And, and it's like, it's a good balance of like, Saber score is grading for optimal and how many times a lineup comes like is it comes up in the Sims and then you're doing some stuff for dupes on the side. I think it creates like a nice uh, hand in hand kind of balance and in a way of trying to get to those lineups where one you win, but two, when you do win, 
you get more of the prize pool by having less dupes. So those are, those are my thoughts there. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of awesome things you can do with the rules dashboard that is just scratching the surface there. So, uh, and then RC Bremen said, never stop learning. That's 100% the, uh, the theme of this show really, you know, office hours, it is a learning environment. So always trying to learn, always trying to learn myself, always trying to learn in the, in the community. So we're going to keep it rolling here. Got a question from the piano teacher. Piano teacher said, I understand how adjusting exposures post build is the way to go because of how a pre-build affects the Sims. I'm trying to get a clear picture of how adjusting projections affects the Sims, whether I'm doing that manually or uploading projections from another source. Okay. Good question. The piano teacher. So the way it works, right? So we have a range of outcomes for every single player in the Sims, and I'm going to switch over to the main slate here. Uh, you know, we, we have our entire SIM database. We summarize that in, in a, in a, uh, graph here for, for everyone to see how often somebody scores a certain amount of fantasy points in the Sims. So, so what happens like, you know, Damien Pierce projected for 19.21 points. Maybe you aggregate projections and his projection is now 21.21 points. What will happen is that we will take every, every time we run a SIM and, pull Damian Pierce's projection from the SIM database, we will add two points onto that. So if we pull a SIM where he scores 12, well, now he scores 14. If we pull a SIM where he scores 30, now he scores 32. So that will happen for every single player that you adjust projections for. And uh, that 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 is, is basically how it works. Uh, you know, let me know if you have any more questions there. But yes, we are just going to shift his distribution by whatever points up or down that you add. And it will only affect him. Any players that he is correlated with, it will not have any effect on that player. If you do want to have like this kind of cascading effect, you will have to adjust team totals. Team totals will have that uh, more, more nuanced approach. So when you adjust team totals, what happens is that we either shave Sims off of the high side or the low side. And what we are trying to do is we are going to basically uh, discount Sims until the new uh, team total that you put in is achieved. So, you know, if we change Houston from 19 points to 21 points, what we're going to do is we are going to discount Sims where Houston has a low score and continue to do that until we can reach the uh, new mean team total that you input. So that is how the two interact with each other. All right. Uh, Naj had a question. Do I ask questions here or in the Discord? Both are fine. We are going to get to all the Discord questions first, and then we will jump over to the YouTube chat. I will get to all the questions before the end of the show, 100% on that. All right. Next question here. Got a question from Necro, and we're going to get this in the chat and get going here. Necro said, what is the reason the generator completely fades someone to 0% or another drastic fade or drastically goes overweight. For example, on the Miami versus Washington NBA slate, it didn't put Rui Hachimura in my generated 40 lineups with two captains splitting the lineups equally, 20 for each captain. Another example, Dylan Brooks in OKC versus Memphis tonight. Is there a way to avoid this other than manually reviewing my utility slots? each generation is it possible to put in a rule that avoids huge differences in ownership versus our lineups it's one of the things that has slammed me a lot using saber sam c cole Komet in chicago bear showdown from sunday or christian watson last night the generator didn't like picking them at all for utility but they had decent ownership thanks i want leverage to be a max of minus 10 to plus 10 okay Good question. So what I will say is that, you know, first and foremost, SaberSim does not understand risk management. And I think that is an important thing to understand. So you can work that into your own process. So we're going to go back to this KC LAC game. Seems like this is like kind of about showdown. So, so what I will say is that, you know, SaberSim is going to build lineups and then grade them based on uh, what it perceives to be the lineups EV in said contest based on the slider settings that are chosen. So, you know, you come in here, you put in the contest you're playing, we put out the slider settings based on our back testing, and then we build the lineups. 
we once the lineups are built, they get graded by whatever metric you're using. And Saber Sam is just going to pack in the highest EV lineups. A lot of times the lineups are uh, fairly similar. Like if we really think one captain is really good, it is just going to jam them in there. And that is where you come in. You know, I like to call it man plus machine rather than just just machine or like just man hand building. Uh, you go in there and you tell Saber Sam, hey, you know, this lineup set that you generated is too risky for, for my risk tolerance. And it sounds like, you're a player wants to be more spread out, you know, plus or minus 10% leverage at the time being, what you're going to have to do is, is what I would do. I would sort by the leverage column and we were talking about flex, right? You know, I would, I would come in here. First thing I would do sort by leverage inversely sort by leverage. So I could see negative leverage and positive leverage plays. So what, what you're going to do is, you know, come in here and we're going to sort. And at the moment, I'm not, this this looks like a really balanced portfolio. I I've seen portfolios. Oh wait, we're we're looking at 500 lineups. That's why. Okay, so we're gonna come in here. We're gonna look at 20 lineups. You know, you're gonna have to come in here and and manually adjust this. So you know, may, maybe you say that you know I don't want more. I think you said uh plus 20 to minus 20. So what I'll say or no, I'm sorry, you said minus 10 to plus 10. I think that that probably works better. If you're building 150 lineups, but um, you know, if I would I would uh, say you know maybe be a, like a little flexible with that number, especially if you're playing like 20 lineups or something. But you're gonna have to come in here, sort by leverage, and then make some adjustments. And you know, saying like, okay, you know, I want I want 10 percent, 10 percent, at least like 10 percent of these guys to lower the the leverage that I'm seeing here. And then you could just come in, knock these out really quickly. And then hit this apply. You don't have to apply it until you're done. And then come in here and see like your highest uh, positive leverage. And then, you know, dial this down and say, you know, uh, maybe I only want 65% here and 55% here. And then that should get, that should keep me at a lower leverage score overall. So definitely going to take like some manual intervention here. If you want to control like the one thing that you can do is that we have like a global max exposure. Uh, what you are talking about seems like a really neat feature. I will take it back to the team, but you know, that didn't take us too long. Our, our exposures seem to be a lot more spread out. Nobody over 22 uh, leverage, a, a leverage score of, of 22, which is just uh, exposure minus ownership. So seems like a pretty balanced portfolio overall now, as, as well as our captains. But, um, you know, I'll take I'll take this back as like a feature request. Uh, allow plus minus leverage on a player pre-build. So sounds like a really neat feature. I'll get that logged with the team. We'll, we'll talk about it internally. But if, if for the time being, I would come in here. I would just understand that Saber Sim, you know, is going to give you the highest EV lineups. It is your job to come in here and dial back the risk or dial up the risk depending on on your risk tolerance, how you play day in, day out. So, you know, just requires some min and max exposure adjustments. Not too hard. Nothing I don't think is a uh, deal breaker. But good question there, Necro. Okay, got a question here from Nipsey. This is our last question in the Discord, and then we will be jumping over to YouTube. Got plenty of questions in the YouTube chat today, so still got a long ways to go here. All right, uh, Necro said, yes, thank you for the lightning fast response during swapping out last night was able to take care of everything with two minutes to go. Okay. Nipsey. Um, I'm glad somebody on the team was able to help you out. Don't think it was me, uh, un un unless it was, but, uh, you know, happy to hear that you got taken care of in crunch time in a, in a really quick, uh, pinch. So really, really happy to hear that the team is able to get back to everybody so quickly there. Okay. Demetrius asks, what's your process for college football? Do you use the same process for NFL? What are some lineup rules for NBA and college football that I can use? Okay, good question. So at the moment, we do not offer uh, simulations for college football. We have it up in the app. We have the slates up in the app. If anybody wants to come in here and upload their custom projections, you can totally do that using the upload button. And we have all the slates available. You know, if you were to go over tomorrow, 
We got like the big main slate, et cetera, showdowns. So if anybody is, uh, you know, using SaberSim for college football, just understand that, you know, we are just using uh, smart randomness and, uh, you know, really, really similar to how any traditional optimizer uh, operates. College football projections are something that we, or college football simulations are something that we want to build in the near future. We have uh, ET phone home, Eric, one of the, our uh, data scientists on the models team. He is our resident college football expert. We brought him on specifically for his knowledge in college football. Uh, he has been a great asset to the team. We are hoping to have college football sims up, I would say, by next season, but more details to come on that front. And uh, when when we do, just understand, like, we will definitely hit the content hard, have Eric on, and uh, talk more college football strategy overall. So not going to be able to do too much on the college football front for you at the moment. I know it is different with like the super flex positions and being able to play two quarterbacks. So I can't speak too much on college football uh, theory overall, but you know, the second question, what are some lineup rules for NBA? I can definitely speak on this. So if you didn't catch the video with Max Seinberg uh, talking about his NBA process would highly recommend that that is over on the YouTube channel under the playlist says, you know, beat NBA DFS in 2022. Awesome video. Some things I got from Max, uh, myself are a, uh, you know, this is like definitely slate context, uh, a slate context rule, but like as a general rule, uh, a fairly, uh, safe rule is a, is a group rule automatic use no more than three players from the same team. And this is like a fairly safe rule on a night to night basis. Just, you know, in, in basketball specifically, uh, players on the same team are usually negatively correlated to each other. Saber Sim understands that. And I'm trying to look at like a good example, maybe like LeBron and, and AD here, you know, two like really high salary guys. And Anthony Davis is the most negatively correlated player to LeBron James. Cause you know, when LeBron is shooting the ball. That's less shots for, for Anthony Davis. And there are only so many shots and so many points to go around in an NBA game. Saber Sim understands that you see it in the correlation values. So when you are building for a big slate, like tonight, when we are having this positive correlation metric on, you are less likely to get lineups with those two players together right off of the bat because Saber Sim understands these things, but it is a good, uh, rule to like have where, you know, um, you are just making sure that you do not have so many pieces from the same team with only so many fantasy point, uh, only so many fantasy points to go around from the same team. I think this is a uh, a perfectly fine rule. A group automatic use no more than three. I would be careful with this rule when there are huge values on the slate, which is why it is important to understand injury news to look at this value column, see where the big value is. It looks like Miami is a perfect example of this tonight. Four of the top five value plays on the slate are Miami players. So if we were to come over, sort by Miami, we can come in here and see who is out. All right, Jimmy Butler's out. Tyler Hero's out. Bam Adebayo's out. So, you know, right off the bat, huge value slate for Miami. I would discount Miami from this rule. If I wanted to do that, I would create a manual rule for all these rules. I would save as manual. That way I can come in here and then I could come into the Miami and I could delete this one team from the rule. That way this rule applies to all teams except for the, for the teams that I do not want it to apply for. Like maybe I'm okay having, you know, four players from Miami. I mean, we saw it. Uh, like a week ago when Giannis was out for Milwaukee, the Javon Carter slate plus the double o- overtime, it was insane. It was, you know, we saw like Javon Carter, Grayson Allen, uh, Brooke Lopez, you know, Bobby Portis, I think did, was like the only player that didn't do good. And he was like one of the highest owned on the slate. So that was really interesting. But, you know, if I was building, you know, I might use a rule like this and I might take Miami out of that rule and say, you know, no, you know, let, let Miami allow four players into it uh, 
And not to say that you're going to get a bunch of Miami four stacks, but allowing the builder that flexibility in these really interesting value situations is something that I would want to do. I want to give the builder the flexibility uh, where where it's needed. So that is a decent uh, starter NBA rule for, for you to try out. So let me know if there's any follow-up there. All right, going to hit this next question from Jeffrey. Say if you were high on several players, if you wanted to boost each player's projection, what would be a good percentile starting point? Um, Jeffrey, if, if what, what I would say is that if there are a group of players that, that, you know, I've written down, I've done some research, I have a list. What, what I would do is one, I would run a build here, right? And then I would see if I could get to the exposures that I want post build. I would not start off with boosting their projection. I would instead tell Saber Sim like, hey, you know, maybe I'm building uh, 20 lineups or maybe I'm playing like the quarter jukebox, the $1.20 max and the $4.20 max on DraftKings. So that's like 60 lineups. I want a unique lineup in each entry. So, you know, I make some projection adjustments. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mess around with these minimax exposures. I'm going to see if I can get to the player's that I want to get to without having to make any projection adjustments. If you could do it all in step three, awesome. If you can't, I would suggest building a bigger pool. If, if that's available to you, if you are maxed out on your pool size, then I would do what you're saying about go in and make adjustments to the projections. I would start with small adjustments, maybe about 10% of a player's uh, points. I think if you handle it from like a raw point, uh, value, you know, like two points for Duncan Robinson is different than two points for Luka Doncic. So I would handle it on a percentage basis. If you need to get to that point, start with like 10% adjustment, run a build, see how much exposure you're getting, and then decide if you need to dial it up more or dial it up less, depending on how that affects your exposures. So that is how I would handle it. Uh, try and handle it post build and then see if you can't then start with small projection adjustments on a percentage basis based on the player's uh, projected points at that time. So those are my thoughts there. All right. Next question from Uncrabby Cabby said, Hey, Andrew, at what point of the day do you feel the simulations are accurate enough to use to bet on spreads and totals for NBA? Okay. Really good question here. Uh, Cabby, so what I will say is that, you know, news is constantly breaking in, in the NBA injury, injury wise. Um, if, if I had to give you a time, I would say probably like 3 PM Eastern is usually, uh, you know, kind of when like the Sims really start to like dial in and, and we get a lot closer. I, if, if, if I were like, you know, being, if, if I wanted to do something a little later, I'd say maybe, maybe like two hours prior to lock, you know, like 5 PM Eastern on like a 7 PM Eastern start time. I would like feel really comfortable with putting in all of my prop bets, et cetera, for the day. I think if you're trying to capitalize like on some bad lines earlier in the day, I would say like 2 PM Eastern, I would, I would feel pretty comfortable. I'd say like Early in the day, I'm not as comfortable. So especially like after that 2 p.m. Eastern window, um, you know, maybe like like after this show, 3 p.m. Eastern, anywhere between 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, feeling pretty comfortable about that. But, you know, not like a uh, solved thing that I, I uh, would uh, li- live and die by. But, you know, just some general guidelines for you there. Let me know if you have any follow-up. All right. Next question here from Demetrius. When I change the min unique players, the projected score gets lower. Should I still raise the min uniques or just leave it at one? Okay, so so Demetrius, this is like definitely a personal preference. So so you are definitely probably going to sacrifice projected points to get more diverse in your lineups. It is our stance that the what you gain from decreasing inter lineup correlation in your portfolio outweighs the small amount of EV that you give up by doing this. Uh, It is a personal preference. Like if projected score means a lot to you and you do not want to get away from some of the highest projected score plays, maybe you're sorting 
by projected score and you're just like, you know what, I'm not comfortable with it, then then leave it at one. Like it's totally okay to do that. But if you are somebody who values diversity more at the expense of some projecting some projection mm-hmm. and you know you want to increase mini uniques and say I want to get as diverse as I possibly can and I want to treat every single lineup in the pool as viable regardless of whether or not I get to the 500th lineup or not like that is that is something you have to answer for yourself and a conclusion that that I cannot give you so you know play around with it uh come up with that determination for yourself understand that that is one of the one of the risks of using men unique players and decide if the risk outweighs uh the the flip side of that coin so Good, good catch there. Definitely a question that I would say, say, you know, ask yourself and answer and then go on from there. But ultimately, no wrong or right answer. Definitely handle on a different player by player basis for for everybody in the community. All right. Uh, William said, when's the big pro upgrade coming to Discord? Really good question. So what I will share with you all is that we were recording some pro content earlier today. Uh, I We are hoping to have it out by the end of the day. If we release the pro exclusive content, it will be packaged with the pro uh, channel in Discord. So stay tuned for that. I know we were recording today. So hopefully ha- should have something out by the end of the day. Uh, for everybody to to use and look at over the weekend. So really good question there, William. All right, scrolling down here, I see um, you know Redshed Games said I'm doing I'm doing it that way now. And thanks, uh, Necro, perfect Necro. Glad you were able to catch the stream live. And uh, hopefully we can build some more tools into the app to to be able to do uh, what exactly you were talking about. But you know I did note it down as a feature request, and I will take it back to the team. Okay. Got two more questions, one in YouTube chat, one in Discord. If anybody has any more questions they want us to get to before the end of the show, get those in now. So I got a question here from Damian Bugs. Said, I have noticed that I do extremely well on lineups for NHL when using the simulator, but I don't do well with NBA. Any advice to help me when using simulator for NBA? Okay, really good question. So I'm going to answer this kind of two parts. So I would say one is that, you know, DFS, every single DFS sport is really high variance. Sounds like you're having some better variance in NHL than NBA. Another thing I will say is that NHL is a highly correlated sport. SaberSim is really good, especially compared to other optimizers across the industry. We handle correlation really well. We use upside correlation. So the correlation that goes into your lineups is based on the correlation that players have with other players at their highest percentiles, at the highest end of their range. We don't really care how uh, a player, I'm going to use baseball as an example. We don't really care about Aaron Judge's correlation to other players when Aaron Judge strikes out three times. We only care about Aaron Judge's correlation when he does really well and goes, you know, three for five with two doubles and a home run or, or whatever that may be. Like those are his upside, you know, 95th, 99th percentile outcomes. We care about the correlation in those uh, situations. So for hockey, we're doing the same thing. I'm not an avid hockey player, which is why I use the MLB example. So can't name too many hockey players, but just understand we are using uh, upside correlation and we understand and handle correlation stacks, et cetera, really, really well. So one of the reasons I think you are probably having more success in NHL as opposed to NBA, a lot less correlation values overall. Uh, you're going to see, you know, much lower positive correlations and negative correlations on both sides of the spectrum, a much more normally distributed sport. I will say that, you know, a lot of, uh, I'll say like a lot of, uh, you know, teams and and companies across the industry uh, project NBA uh, much better overall just because it is a much more uh, projectable sport. So can lead to NBA being a little bit harder to, 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 you know, bink and and win, but that is okay. Uh, What I will say is that as far, as far as advice for, for using SaberSim, for NBA, you know, check out our NBA content. If you go over to our YouTube channel and you want to hear from people playing at the highest of high levels, 
you know, come over here to our uh, How to Beat NBA DFS in 2022 and listen to Max Steinberg and Jordan talk about Max's process. Uh, we have a lot of other awesome content for NBA, NBA Daily Fantasy here. I've done some videos in the Office Hours channel talking about NBA. If you scroll down here to our uh, – let me see if I can find it really quickly. This looks like NFL. These three videos, how to beat daily fantasy basketball like an NBA DFS pro. That's the one with Max. I walk through an NBA process live on stream and then all things NBA ahead of tip off. I would just say, you know, keep grinding, keep exercising good bankroll management, try and learn, ask questions in the community, and then hopefully some positive variants will fall your way. But, uh, you know, don't be... I will say uh, to discourage this early in the season, basketball is going to run all the way through April. Uh, got a long, long way to go, a long season. So continue to exercise good bankroll management principles, apply our DFS profit plan. If you're not aware of it, that is also on our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, great contest selection framework done by the team there. Highly recommend it. So, you know, keep grinding. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And I encourage you to just continue to try and learn and, uh, you know, play as many slates as you can. So good questions there. Got a question here from uh, Geoff Manning said, I've been playing with a rule process for introducing core players. I add them all to a rule, usually about 20 to 30 players for NBA. Then I have a group rule to say, use at least X. What number of players would you recommend? The higher the number, the less I am letting SaberSim do its thing. Any thoughts? And uh, before we touch on that, Damien said, awesome, thanks. Happy you're here to catch a live. You know, any follow-up, just let me know. So getting back to this question about uh, rules, what I will say is, one, it's going to depend on the the site and the sport. So like, for instance, for NBA, for DraftKings, DraftKings has eight roster spots. And if you're playing FanDuel NBA, they have nine roster spots. So a little different there, site to site. I will say that it is like totally a personal preference. We talked about this on stream with uh, John Stinger had like a really similar question. You know, how do I work in some of the low owned plays that I want? What I suggested was running a test build at default settings without any rules, without any um, adjustments, et cetera, seeing what the high, most highly projected plays are and then working those into your rule. That way, you know, you are getting to some of the plays that Sabersim likes. You know, maybe I take these players above 25% exposure here. And, you know, there seems to be a big drop off from 27 to 19 here. And then you use these players, or maybe, you know, you like this drop off between 30 to 45%. Maybe you add these highly exposed players to your rule. That way you can incorporate some of the players that SaberSim wants to use with the players that you also want to use. I think that is a definitely another viable approach. Uh, you know, not a wrong or right answer here. Just trying to give you some tips from things that I've seen and other questions that we've answered on this show. I would try and work in these highly exposed players on SaberSim side into your rule. That way you kind of uh, meet in the middle there. So really good question. Got... Uh, gonna hop over back to Discord. Got a question here from GM33. GM33 said, I've been playing with a oh wait. Uh okay. So GM33 is is Geoff Manning. So okay, so we just answered this uh in the YouTube chat. So gonna skip this one, gonna hit this next question here from Nipsey. And Nipsey said. Hey, Andrew, since Sabre score is used to measure the strength of your lineups, what is used to determine the strength of your player pool? Okay, really good question, Nipsey. So what I will say is that as far as player pool, these are going to be the filters that are set pre-built. So, you know, the filter for NBA, I believe is set to 13 by default. I think it's set to 15 for FanDuel by default, but... You know, if if this is just not like a, a strong enough point for you, you can add other filters based on other stats. You can increase this my projection. I like I had this one set to 18 because that was what Max Steinberg said he recommends. So, you know, Max goes a little further on like these bigger slates and increases this 
my projection filter, I will say like you can sort, you know, you can scroll down here, see where the cutoff is and see what kind of players you're leaving out or, or including that are kind of on those fringes. You can also like come in here and sort by percentiles and see, you know, like, at, like what, at what, at what percentile score am I okay seeing a player in my lineup? You know, if a player only scores, you know, 24 points, 5% of the time, is that, is that good enough for me? And you can kind of make those determinations. So I would say like, definitely check out the default filters and see if you are comfortable with them and then see if you want to make an adjustment to them in one direction or another Add a second filter and kind of go from there. I'll say like for NFL, I, I usually always uncheck defense from my min projection filter. I think that, you know, defenses are like really highly variant and any defense can go off. I like to leave all defenses viable, but just a side note there, a uh, really good question. So yeah, would definitely come in here and check out the filters and adjust them as you see fit. But that being said, everybody, that was our last question. The team will be around all weekend in discord. As always, if anyone is having any trouble, Throw a message in the support channel and we will get back to you right away. Good luck in all of your contests this weekend. We will be right back here on Monday for a short week, Thanksgiving week. Next week, we will have streams on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. No streams on Thursday and Friday, but hope everybody has a good weekend and good luck in your contest. Until then, see ya.